Hello and welcome back to the Godfather Minute. Minute. My name is Alex Robinson. And I am Andy Robinson. And together we make up the Godfather, Godfather Minute, Minute brothers. brothers. How are you doing this week, my I'm brother? I'm doing fine. How are you, my brother? Uh, I'm doing good. Doing good. Good, no, good. No, nothing really noteworthy. It's cold. It's getting cold here now in Portland for once. Not it for is. once, but every other country seem to be, every other country, every other state seem to be getting a big deep freeze. Yeah, it has been cold here. You're right, but it's, but it's been a little bit hot on the podcasting circuit. I heard you've been guest on a lot of different podcasts. <laughs> well, you today uh, you refer to the fact that today I recorded three different podcasts. That's crazy. Three different time zones too, right? Yeah, I'm the, no, no, they were uh, two of them were in. Uh, yeah, actually, there were different time zones. Yeah, and but Arizona anyway. is its own time zone. Don't forget. It's true. Yeah, it's it's like a uh, the space time continuum. It. Uh, it counts as its own little uh, kind of like fiefdom. Yeah. Uh, today we're talking about minute 79 of The mm-hmm. Godfather. Alex, repeat after me. E minuto. E minuto. Numero. Numero. Setanta nove. Setanta nove. That's pretty easy to remember. That's, well, it's because you're getting better. That's why it's oh, easy to remember. Setanta nove. You got it. Um, minute setanta nove. Uh, nova. Nove. Nove. <laughs> nove. <laughs> Oy <Oive. laughs> Uh, the, uh, the gang is waiting around to hear, uh, where Mikey is going to be meeting up with the Turk and McCluskey. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom is nervous and he seems like he wants to pull the plug when the phone rings. Yeah. Dun, mm-hmm. Dun, dun. Mm-hmm. That's it for the summary, I think, right? Yeah. That's pretty, yeah. Um, it ends with the phone ringing. It starts, it's very quiet. They're all eating Chinese food mm-hmm. and just waiting for that call. Uh, the the Chinese food that was Coppola's idea, really, because he says he remembers he has a when he was a kid mm-hmm. eating, uh, having a bunch of Chinese food boxes open, and the family eating around there. So he put that in as like a personal memory mm. of Chinese food. I have a, I think a better, more strategic reason why they're eating Chinese food. Why? So that when Michael goes to the restaurant later, he'll be hungry again. Actually, I didn't notice. Is Michael eating in this scene? Or oh, gosh, just, I don't think so, no. Because he has his jaw wired yeah, shut, so yeah. he can't. He can't mm-hmm. uh, maybe that's why they just got, like, noodles. So go, oh, yeah. <laughs> Suck <laughs> down some wonton soup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so Chinese food. Yeah. So uh, how long is it supposed to be until the... Like, Andrew, how long is it supposed <laughs> to be until uh, we hear from the Turk? We only have 10 minutes left until he's shot dead. Until he's shot Spoiler dead. Spoiler alert. Okay. Yep. Uh, so well, it's the th- 10 minutes, so it's just about two and a half months. Have our supporters cried out what they want the next countdown to be, Alex? Uh, yes, they have. Okay. The, it's definitely the um, shooting McCluskey is definitely the... <laughs> <laughs> Who does he shoot first? He shoots the Turk first. He shoots the Turk yeah. first. So then he's McCluskey's another countdown. Just staring. Up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, like a five-second countdown. <laughs> yeah, five-second uh no i think it was the uh it's the sunny getting shot on the causeway I oh think okay is, is the lead are we locking it in right now no we, okay. let's double check we like you said we have two oh, and a half so months. we're gonna because we're gonna reveal it when the this countdown ends yeah after the turk gets shot so, so got it you'll, you'll, you'll a little bit of time yeah left. okay um, did you put genre in the poll no can you put a separate genre oh poll? you want that i just figured oh you no, no yeah let me pick. freedom as possible let me pick, but i'm like, leaning toward a a uh, a New Orleans ragtime. Oh, feel? you're not gonna do a hip hop one to get some of those raps <laughs> we've been working on in there. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, get, Sonny getting shot on the causeway could be a good uh, <laughs> yeah. forum for a rap duel. They mentioned that it's an hour and a half till he's supposed to be in front mm-hmm. of Jack mm-hmm. Dempsey's joint. Yeah, and uh, according to my records. Um, Long Beach, where they live, is 33.9 miles from Manhattan. Look at you with the online map resources. You know, they didn't have those back then, Alex. <laughs> a lot of money in them maps. Uh-huh. Uh, so, which basically, it takes an hour. And that's an hour in today's time. Mm-hmm. That's true. I have to assume it was slower back then? 
Yeah. Uh, uh. Just because there wouldn't be as many highways and byways. Yeah, and but there wouldn't be as much traffic either, yeah, right? That's true. Yeah. It's a, huh. In any case, it seems like it's cutting really close. Yeah. If it takes them an hour to get into the city. Yeah. Well, especially because they're dining Chinese food. They're going to have to stop on the way to the city to eat again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Is that okay to say, by the way? I don't think that's considered racist. It's not. I, although we'll have to check, though. We'll okay. have to check with the council. Let's see All right. If you, listeners, if you're hearing that, it means we've checked and we have not scrubbed this out of the podcast. All right. Or, you know what? We don't care who we offend. That's true. Or if you're listening to this and you hear it, it means we you're listening to the double bonus version that we did the seek. What do they call it? A, a ghost track on a CD? Uh, a ghost track. A ghost track. Or <laughs> if you download a certain link, you'll hear that. Okay. <laughs> Just for that one line. Or you, we have totally forgot to look it up and we just left it in. That would not happen. It w- you could and I are, 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 are very good stewards of our, uh, of our podcast content. <laughs> so you have more about the routes and the... No, nope, that was the, it. Just, it just, just the fact that it was going to take an hour to get from Long Beach to, uh, to uh, Manhattan. Hey, before we get into, the, into more of the content, I, I'd like to share one of the reviews that was posted online. A review of us? Yes. Or of the Godfather? No, a review of us. Oh, Do you want to hear it? this? Are you sure you want to hear it? Sure. Well, because this was a this was a suggestion on how we could improve. Mm-hmm. And I don't I don't know how to I, I don't this know what bonus to think content about it. material. <laughs> no, I'm gonna say no. Okay. Right? Because <laughs> we're always accused of that. Right. <laughs> we're always accused mm-hmm. of pushing all the funny stuff to the bonus content. All right. So let's so hear a, a reviewer. And, and listeners, don't get in the habit of putting bad stuff in with the hopes that we'll just talk about it. Yeah, I say you're not, you're definitely encouraging that by okay. leaving bad reviews. I, well, no, it's not, I wouldn't even say it's a bad review. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's positive feedback. Mm. Is that what you call it? It's constructive feedback? criticism. It's constructive criticism. That's a bad review. <laughs> yeah, aka a bad review. <laughs> oh, he, okay, here it goes. It says, Sock it to me. It says, good, but a couple of suggestions. <sighs> yes. What's this person's screen name? <laughs> what should that matter? I just want to know what their screen name Why? is. Why? Because like, you know them? or No, just because I want to see. You can tell a lot about a person by their screen name. You know what? I'm going to read it and I'm going to have you guess as to what you think their screen name will be. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Or at least, at least the same kind of vibe. Okay, of the go ahead. All right. Good, but a couple of suggestions. One, stop doing your planning on the air. Edit it out or talk about it off the air. Our planning? Yeah. Okay. I mean, there are some times where we talk, like, should we talk about that? Or, oh, you know, let's do that next minute. We're, we're vocal about that. Okay. I think that can kind of lead to some comedy, though. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. You okay with that? I'm okay with it. Okay. But I don't listen to the show, so. <laughs> and then the second suggestion was uh, uh, call your support uh, your support group, the support page, the Robinson family. Oh, like the, like the mafia. Yeah. Fa- like mafia family. Yeah. Oh, okay. That wasn't so bad. Yeah, not so bad. That was, that was it? There's no, that was it. There's no third whammy coming no, out? No, that was it. No, <laughs> okay. just a couple oh, that's of suggestions. So yeah, not so bad. So let's... Uh, let's but, it, but it just got me wondering how much we preparation we do on the air. We, we prepare quite a bit for the podcast. Yeah. But I guess we do talk about some of the ideas about what we're going to talk right. about on the podcast. Anyway, enough said about and that. And now we're talking about talking about I know. This planning so stuff I, I, on Now the more people are going to respond with reviews oh, about that. It's a bad, it's a bad, uh, yeah. It's a, you should start just reading good reviews. Ah. People would love to listen to that, just well, us reading good reviews of our show. Well, I have a good review. Oh, do you? I have another one to share. Uh-oh. Uh, it says, you guys should quit talking about a movie you don't know anything about. Stick to Star Wars? Whoa. I'm not sure I totally get that one. Sounds pretty good, though. <laughs> well, I think they refer to the fact that I co-host a Star Wars podcast, Star Wars Minute. Well, well, what do you mean? <laughs> was that a real was that a No, real I real? just made that up. Oh, okay. Right. You can't uh, print that. <laughs> so, what, do you want to take a guess as to this person's screen name? Uh, it could be limitless, but yeah. they weren't such You're bad right. things. It's so, limitless. No way. Yeah. It's a limitless.org. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna say it's something that he's. Uh, it's it's clearly he's a very impatient person who doesn't like hearing uh, mm. plans being made. Yeah. So I'm gonna say uh, nervous Nelly four. You got it. No. Way. Well, you're close. It was ner- ner- nervous Nelly seven. Oh. Yeah. 
<laughs> that was so like nice work. three. Okay, good nice work. work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Getting back to The Godfather, because that's what people are listening uh-huh. for. In the book, uh, so before they get the call about where the meeting is going to be held, mm-hmm. there is a conversation that Sonny has with Salazzo's people setting up where they'll pick him up. Uh-huh. And the book, there's some interesting bits. I'd like to read from it. May I? I'll allow it. And the book isn't necessarily different than the movie, it's just that it has additional information in this case. I would say that that makes it different then. Okay. Should I, do we play the song then? Yes. Okay. The book is different. You know, just play the song. Don't ask me. Just take out the, <laughs> take out that part where you asked me if we should play the song. I'm very verbose today. <laughs> I'm doing a lot, way too much talking. Here it goes. Yeah, a whole lot of verbose. <laughs> the book is different than the movie. The book is different than the movie. The book is different. The book is different. The book is different than the movie. Yeah. Page 142. Puto writes, The phone rang. Sonny, again, this is the previous phone call. The phone rang. Sonny answered it and he held up a hand as if to signal for quiet, though, though no one had spoken. He jotted some notes down on a pad, then said, Okay, he'll be there. And hung up the phone. Sonny was laughing. That son of a bitch, Salazzo. He really is something. Here's the deal. At 8 tonight, he and Captain McCluskey pick up Mike in front of Jack Dempsey's bar on Broadway. They go someplace to talk. And get this. Mike and Salazzo talk in Italian so that the Irish cop don't know what the hell they are talking about. He even tells me, don't worry. He knows McCluskey doesn't know one word in Italian unless it's soldi. And he's checked you out, Mike, and knows you can understand Sicilian dialect. (laughs) Michael said dryly, I'm pretty rusty, but we won't talk long. (laughs) That was interesting. Yeah. So they had already planned to talk in Sicilian. Right. Yeah. It wasn't a a, uh, spontaneous thing as it appears to be. In the movie, it kind of came across that way. Yeah. Because he asks McCluskey's permission. Right. Yeah. I think he says that. Uh, do you know what soldi means? Uh, that's the one word in Italian. McCluskey how do you spell means. it? S O L D I. Soldi. Yeah. That means. Uh, does, does it mean like stand him up? <laughs> soldi. <laughs> a little tough, dude. God damn it, Phil! I said soldi. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean? It means money. Money. That ah, makes sense. Uh-huh. That makes sense. I thought it was going to mean veal. That's the one <laughs> word he knows. It's the best in the city. Um, what else you got? Well, so at one point they talk about the idea of putting a tail on the car. Mm-hmm. And then Sonny says, uh, Salazzo would lose our ass going around the block. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. He doesn't say, oh, he'd see the tail or he would, he would, that would make him suspicious. Mm-hmm. He makes it sound like they will like, almost like the Salazzo would, would expect a tail and would purposely be trying to, mm-hmm. you know, to, sh- to shake it anyway, which yeah. I guess we do see him do later on mm-hmm. when they, with the whole bridge uh, stunt. Yeah. He's not taking any chances. Yeah. Um, Good job, Louis. <laughs> uh, I have some information about the negotiator. Do, doing U-turns on the, on the bridge is a big expense. <laughs> he's he's got to pay the toll twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk to me about the negotiator. Do you know? Uh, is this the Bochicio family? Yeah, yeah, the Bochicio. Oh, yeah. I've got a lot about that later when the Don calls the meeting of the five families. Because oh, in the okay. book, that's when Puzo writes about it. Okay. Then but I, then I, then I, uh, should I do it now or? Uh, you can if you want. I have a lot about it later. Okay. Well, that's like months away. Yeah. So by now, then everyone yeah. will forget this stuff. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. He writes quite, he writes a whole chapter about the Bochicchio family. It's fascinating. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just give it in broad strokes then for now. Mm-hmm. So basically the way it works is that the, um, the negotiator, uh, mm-hmm. is, is from a third family mm-hmm. who I thought it was assumed it was from someone from the, uh, the Talia family. Oh yeah. But it's not. It's someone from a neutral family yeah. who then goes to play Pinochle with Clemenza's, uh, <laughs> Clemenza's buddies. And um, so Salozzo is the one, because he organized the meeting, Sets up, he has to hire the negotiator. Yeah. And so the negotiator goes to the house to play mm-hmm. Pinochle and while, while the meeting is going on. And the, the understanding is that uh, if Mikey gets killed... Then Clemenza and his guys will kill the negotiator. Will kill their guy who's playing Pinochle. The, the negotiator will kill 
No, no, the, the negotiator will be killed. Oh, the negotiator being the one from Solazzo's family. From the neutral family. I'm not, so keep going. So, so, <laughs> so Solazzo hires a negotiator. Yeah, from the Bocciccio family. From the Bocciccio family. Neutral family. And so he, let's call him, uh, let's call Bocicchio. him. Bocciccio. Let's call him Bocciccio. Bocciccio uh-huh. goes to play Pinochle of Clemenza's guys. With Clemenza's guys. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so let's suppose that the Turk did not listen to the song and he killed Mikey instead. Uh-huh. Yeah. Then at that point, Clemenza and those guys are like, well, we have to kill our Bochicchio. We have to kill Bochicchio because the, the understanding then is that the Bochicchio mm-hmm. family will go all out for revenge on Solozzo. on Solozzo because he's the one who broke the, he caused it. He, yeah, ultimately mm-hmm. is responsible for it. So yeah, uh, it makes sense. That's a fascinating yeah. thing. It's a fascinating kind of uh, yeah setup. Yeah, yeah. It's a, would you like so? Is the negotiator like a good job to have? Well, it works for this family. What? what mm-hmm. I'll give a little bit of what I read mm-hmm. about in in the book. So the Bocciccio is a family from Sicily, and for generations they and still are the the most loyal family within their family. Mm-hmm. They are one of the, they are more loyal to each other's blood ties than they are to the people that marry into the family. Which yeah. which might sound shocking, but they that's there's even a hierarchy within the family, but they are so loyal. They will it's kind of odd they'll even do things against the interest of their family just for the sake of of avenging family honor and family, stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so What's interesting is when these families started coming to America, uh, all the five families and other families out West, they all found a niche in making uh, money through different operations mm-hmm. like yeah. gambling and prostitution. The Bochicu family were never particularly like business savvy. Like mm-hmm. I said, they even did things against their family interests, but the one, their one strength was they were fiercely loyal. Mm-hmm. And so they found this niche right. in serving as negotiators, as, as brokering peace, because everyone knew that... If you violated yeah. that, they you, you would lose, and and they would go to the ends of the earth to kill you. So, um, but if how often does this come up that they need negotiators? Is it enough to sustain a whole criminal empire? Yeah, um, I mean, they must have some other operations going on. Or do you think there's some like union rule that says any time two mafia guys meet each other, they have to have a nego- yeah. the negotiator has to be hired. Just for the, just for, you know, uh, and you know, I wasn't totally prepared to talk about this cause mm-hmm. it's really more later. When okay. The five we can, families we can, uh, we can, we'll kick it down the road, but I do seem to remember maybe even the five families all contribute to support the family. Oh, that maybe seems, that seems what a great job, right? Yeah. So, so the I question, think. so going back to the question, do you want to be the negotiator? Do you want to be the one who goes to, it's funny also they call him the negotiator <laughs> as opposed to like the hostage. I know. <laughs> yeah. He's not, there's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> So, and so it is strange that if Mikey dies, then Clemenza is obligated to kill Bochicchio because that's the only way that Salazzo's people will pay the price. I guess they could have let Bochicchio go and then the Corleone family themselves could have followed up and, and avenged Mikey's death. But I guess they're paying for this service and they know that the Bochicchios are especially good at that. Yeah, but it does seem like you would get favor by that by not killing off the negotiator. You think the you think the Bochicchio family would be like, we're so glad you didn't kill our our cousin that you know, like yeah, it's it's a weird thing I, that it, it requires. <laughs> it's like they're almost like you, until the blood their bloodlust is is yeah. is taken up, then they wouldn't. I guess because then they wouldn't go after necessarily Mikey, the guys who killed Mikey, because it's not their fight. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, and, and they take think, the murder <laughs> of their, their family member and then place that risk, like they put the emotions they would feel, the rage, and then just direct it towards yeah. someone's third party. I know, it is really <laughs> strange, and you would think that because of how fiercely loyal they are, how passionate they are, mm-hmm. that if it played out that way, Salazzo kills Mikey, then Clemenza kills the negotiator, that the Bochicchio family would kill Salato's people and Clemenza. Right. Because it's like, that's what they do. They could, they couldn't possibly live with themselves if they didn't kill everyone involved with the death. So, but of, they can't do that. They would totally ruin their business. It was, yeah. it's, 
<laughs> it's business. It's not personal. Yeah. Wow, this is negotiate this pinochle players take it very personally, Alex. <laughs> So to answer your question, I would not want to be the negotiator, even if they were letting me win at Pinochle. Have you ever played Pinochle? Never. I don't even know how it's I played. can't even describe it. I always thought Pinochle was a food. <laughs> You're like pig's knuckles. Isn't it? Isn't peanut? Oh, I'm thinking peanut brittle. Oh, that's another yeah. yeah. Peanut brittle. <laughs> Maybe we're going to have to learn the rules to Pinochle and talk about it in the bonus content. We'll ask, ask we'll, we'll answer. answer. The complete Pinochle tutorial coming up. <laughs> yeah. So the so the other thing I thought was interesting was that Tom says even Salazzo's people don't know where the meeting is going to be. Yeah, isn't that interesting? So does that mean that they have mm. spies in the? Is you think it's in the Tatalia family or is it in the the Turks crew? I mean, the Turk must have some crew. Mm-hmm. He's got to have some people. He's not just a lone yeah. wolf mm-hmm. working with the Tatalia family. But I'm guessing the Corleones are looking at. Salazzo's crew and Natalia's crew and just no one had no one knows because Salazzo's keeping it very tight so because he because he's the hunted one <laughs> he's not that clever <laughs> but um it implies that they have someone who's asking mm-hmm. the, the inside information from the Turks family yeah. so which is crazy because Luca Brazzi was supposed to be that guy. But I, <laughs> I guess some other Corleones were successfully penetrated. The they should have. Uh, they never should have <laughs> sent him the sent the the vest filled with fish. They uh-huh. should have just kept getting notes from Luca Brazzi. Oh, you know, oh, <laughs> like yeah. they're sending out like uh, fake information <laughs> through Luca. Dear Don Corleone, <laughs> this is an update, January fifth. How are you? I am good. <laughs> I am good on the day of your daughter. Your, your daughter's wedding day. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I met with Salato. He's not such a bad guy. <laughs> He's pretty good with a knife, though. I met with Barzini. <laughs> the Wait, Luca- you think you think Luca talked to Barzini? <laughs> he talked to Barzini. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, I think I'm, that's all I have for minute well, se- number 79. Isn't it in this minute where Detective Phillips calls? No, it's the next oh, minute. The, next the phone one. rings mm. at the end of this minute, and then we hear the information tomorrow. Okay. The phone ringing, I didn't even realize the phone was ringing. It's so it's quiet in the mix. Mm. Either that, maybe you were just my speakers are, are broken or whatever. Oh, maybe. But, maybe you haven't heard a home phone ring in so long, you, didn't, you don't even recognize it. <laughs> yeah, Sonny's ringtone was so it's, <laughs> it's strange that... Uh, so I saw you speaking of ringtones. Should we talk about that in the bonus episode? What ringtones would they have? <laughs> yeah, well, I thought we were not supposed to talk about the bonus stuff anymore. No, just to, just to like plug it. People get so mad. Oh, that's true, yeah. I saw an interesting YouTube video where they had two 17-year-old boys, uh, and there was a rotary phone. Mm-hmm. And someone was like, figure out how to make a call on this thing. It was just for like five minutes. They're like trying to figure out how to use the rotary, <laughs> the rotary gun number. That's like awesome. pressing them or like, so it's. Uh, That's great. It was very funny. That's like me trying to use Snapchat. <laughs> you know, are you on Snapchat? No. no. Well, I tried, but uh, you can see the YouTube video of me trying to figure it out. <laughs> well, that is all I have for number 79. Yeah. That's, I think that's all I got too. Well, what do we want to rate this minute? Hmm. Mm, it's kind of transition. Mm. Eating Chinese food. They kind of, I don't know, it's, it's, there's some fun banter, though. This is where Hagen gets mad. It's like, he, so let's might not even be in the car, right? Uh, Where's that next minute? I'm confusing it to. It's kind of like one scene for me. Oh, yeah, no, that is in this one. You know what? Mm-hmm. I do have more notes for this. Uh, yeah, the other note I had is Soloto might not even be in the car. <laughs> oh that's right because Sonny just wanted to go and blast in right yeah like as soon as they pull up he would yeah. just they would just shoot him yeah. <laughs> but I'd be in the car Sonny <laughs> I mean, Robert Duvall's image easier to do when he's yelling yeah, when, he's, yeah. uh, when he's yelling also it is <laughs> typical that that he's like we should call it off yeah. I'm worried about Mikey's safety yeah yeah he's cautious mm-hmm. I guess an, uh, an attorney is cautious Conciliary, not so much. Oh, is that's that, the is difference. That, is that actually what it says? No, I'm that? just saying that oh, now. I good, think that's maybe yeah. the difference. Like I said, wartime conciliary would not be as cautious. Or does Tom know that 
it's inevitable that Sonny's going to get killed. So he's like, mm. we have to keep Michael safe because he's our last. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, he's our last hope. Yeah. That probably. boy is our last hope. Yeah. yeah that makes so, sense. Uh, no, there is another. <laughs> yeah, me, guys. I'm coming back from the airport. Don't, don't step me over. Oh, Fredo. <laughs> To do a quick Star Wars crossover, that would be funny. Like, no, there is another, and you see the ghost of Fredo <laughs> in his chair <laughs> drinking his uh, banana daiquiri, <laughs> ghost banana daiquiri. <laughs> uh, so, so what would you rate this, Alex? Well, like you said, it's a transitional moment, we're, but we both reveal at the same time, right? Yeah. So, on the, after on the, three, on, on the count of three, ready? Ready? One, two, wait, wait. One, one, two, two three. 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 I said three. You said, yeah, what would you say after three? Well, nothing. Oh. Three was my rating. Oh, so. okay. So on so three. three. Yeah. yeah. Three. Okay. There we go. We agreed. All right. Yeah. So once we agreed. <laughs> yeah. It's, it starts off kind of slow because they're just eating food, but then you yeah. do get some, you get some Clemenza talk, you get some uh, Sunny talk, you get some, everyone gets a little bit of stuff. In it. And it is a good opening of the minute too. I kind of like how quiet it is and they're just eating, mm-hmm. kind of gearing up. It raises the tension a little bit. You think they picked up the Chinese food or was it delivered? Mm, I think it was delivered. You think? Yeah. And some guys out front did a little taste test to make sure it wasn't poison. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> There's all like like five dead guys laying out there for, <laughs> all, for all the poison food they've been getting. <laughs> Chopsticks going to, <laughs> poked in their eyes. <laughs> that means he sleeps with the noodles. <laughs> All right, so I guess that'll wrap up minute seventy nine yeah, of around, Godfather. Stick around for the bonus content. We got some really a potluck of things to to touch on. Yeah, we have like a uh, slush pile, right? Yeah, I like to call it "Clean It Up." <laughs> Did so, you come up with a theme song? I hope <laughs> working on it. Okay, working on it. And these are all different questions we asked in previous episodes that we never answered. So mm-hmm. it's really we asked, we, we didn't, didn't answer. answer. So uh, if you want to ask us a question, go over to, and you're on Facebook, go over to Fredo Corleone's Mickey Mouse Nightclub. It's our little uh, Facebook group there where you can get together with uh, other listeners and talk about the Godfather and share memes mm. and, uh, and all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. We need to do more Godfather memes. Yeah, we do. I just learned how to do memes on my phone. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Awesome. During the, the, the December holiday. So nice. I, I, I'm going to start trying it. You're going to be on Snapchat by the end of this year. I know. Is it. Snapchat a meme generator? No, I don't. I, oh. You're asking the wrong okay. person. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, everyone. So uh, we'll see you then. And until next time, try try the the veal. It's the the best best in the city. city.